Hello everybody, this is Brother Luke, Sin City Preacher. Well, hallelujah. Another name written in the Lamb's Book of Life. I guess that much has been said about the concept of friendship evangelism. Some people criticize it. I will tell you that we should never fail to make sure everyone we know, all those family members and friends, those people that we love and care about, at least let's make sure that they know the good news. And, and then we can at least feel that well, we, we made an effort. Uh, as Paul says, there's no blood on my hands. At least I told you the truth. And then what happens with it after that? What will they do with Jesus? That's between them and Jesus. Yes, after we tell them the good news, we can continue watering and hoping that the seed springs to life. Sometimes it doesn't. But if we continue to show that person uh, love and friendship, and also our lives can serve as a testimony to them, when they see how Jesus, the Holy Spirit, uh, is transforming our lives, that also speaks volumes about not only the saving power of Jesus, but the transforming power of the Holy Spirit. So all this to say that my nephew Ken, who's about nine years younger than me. Um, I told him about Jesus many years ago. I'm, I'm guessing it's at least 20 years. And uh, he, uh, he was interested and he was polite and uh, he did not immediately receive the good news with joy and get saved. But uh, I asked him to read a book, More Than a Carpenter. It's a very small paperback book that uh, uh, proves that the Bible's true and, the, and the, the resurrection is true. And and that book and, and my testimony, and I think maybe others played a part in it, but Ken got saved many years ago. And... Uh, since that time, as the Bible says, from faith to faith, from my faith to Ken's faith, and now Ken's best friend, Jake. Now, Jake is a younger man, and Ken has uh, been uh, a good friend, and actually an employer, and a, and a, and a uh, I would say in some ways, a, a mentor and as a, and an example to Jake. Uh, but Ken was not negligent. He was not timid. He told Jake, uh, as soon as he had the opportunity, about Jesus and, and the gospel, the free gift of salvation. And for a long time, for years, Jake was at least agnostic and, and uh, uh, skeptical. But after many, many years, I'm guessing probably 10 years, the seeds that Ken planted has sprung to life. And now Jake is born again. So, hallelujah. We can celebrate. Uh, we're guaranteed that Jake and Ken and I, we're all going to be in heaven together because of this free gift that Jesus gave us. But the point of all this, I would say, is that 
yes, let's not just hope that our light shines and, and people somehow see that we're so good that they, they want to, uh, you know, have what we have. That there is a purpose for that, but we, we, we should never think that that's enough. We must be bold enough to tell them the gospel. But sometimes that seed will remain dormant for years, even decades. But with continued friendship and love and patience, always being ready to provide an answer for the faith that's in us. Uh, eventually, that's, that seed springs to life. This should be a lesson to all of us. Thank you for watching and bless you in the name of our great Savior God, Jesus.